Hey guys, so today we're going to start off with talking about discrete random variables and what is a discrete random variable, what makes it that and not a continuous variable, and also what are some basic ideas behind the discrete random variable that we have to go ahead and learn so that we go ahead and apply them to probability problems. So let's go ahead and get started. So discrete variables are quantitative variables. And so remember from back in the day, quantitative was what? Quantitative was just basically numerical data, right? So it's quantitative data that's broken down into discrete chunks. And so what do I mean by that? Essentially, it's anything countable. Those are the, usually the easiest way for you to tell something is discrete. So for example, profits. Let's say you're playing the lotto, right? There's only so many profits that you can make. You either lose a dollar or you win the jackpot, right? First digits, so for example, the first digit of any cell phone number, that's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3. It's not going to be 1.2. It's not going to be 2.7. Another one, number of kids. You can't pop out 2.2 kids, right? So these are anything, uh, any numbers that can be countable, um, and these are a couple examples right here. So the next one, we're going to just touch upon it, but we're not really going to dive on in quite yet, but the next one is continuous variables. So continuous variables are quantitative variables that can that cannot be broken down into discrete chunks, and so these are things that are that are measured. For example, weights. So weights, you don't weigh just one pound or two pound. There's something in between, right? You can weigh 1.7, 1 1.2953. So these things cannot that cannot be broken down to these discrete chunks. Another one, volume. So for example, how much water you're drinking, um, money, how much money you're making, time that you spend doing something. You don't just spend one second or two seconds. There's something in between that too. So now, the easiest way to distinguish uh, discrete random variable problems, so I'm going to say discrete random variable, and I'm going to go ahead and abbreviate this from here on out as DRV, so discrete random variable problems, is to look for a table like the one below. So my head kind of covered that one, I'm sorry. Um, so this table will include two things, the variable name or just x, right, so it'll be labeled as the variable x, or, I mean, I'm also the probability associated with each of those outcomes. So P of X, so probability of X. So here we see an example, so discrete random variable or again it could have the title of a variable and then we go across and we have different values right for that variable. We have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40. Does that make sense? And then the probability associated with getting any of those outcomes. So 0.10 aka 10 percent, remember in statistics we use decimals not percentages. So the next one is 20, 40 percent, 20 percent, 10 percent. And remember also what should these probabilities add up to? If we add these up, they should equal, and this is coming back, I'm talking about sample space, we have all the possible outcomes on here, right? All the probabilities should equal to 1. So the total sum of the probabilities must equal 1. And again, I've said it right here. Remember that the probability of S, which is our sample space, or all the possible outcomes that we can run into, equals 1. And then the probability of A, or event A, or any of these outcomes, has to be between what? between 0 and 1, right? Because we can have 0% chance of happening, 100% chance of happening, but not more than 100%, and not less than 0, because you can't have a negative probability. Cool? So let's go ahead and do a quick example just to kind of tie this stuff in. What is a missing probability within this table? So I have three given probabilities. One is missing, and this is a discrete random variable distribution. So we see that we have all the possible outcomes for a lottery profit, right? So you either lose a dollar, you break even, you win five dollars, and these are profits, right? So technically that, that gain was kind of six dollars because you lost one when you put money in. So you profit five dollars and then you profit a million dollars. And there's probabilities associated with each of those. So how do we find the one that's missing? The way we do that is basically Everything is supposed to equal to 1, right? Once we add it up. So, to find that one, we'd say probability of negative 1 plus probability of 0 dollars, right? Plus probability of 5 plus probability of, I'm going to put jack for jackpot. Should all equal 1. Which one are we trying to find out of those? The probability of negative 1? No, right, because we're given that. Probability of zero dollars? No, because we're given that as well. So let's look for the probability of five, because that's the one we're looking for. 
So let's do a little algebra. It might have been a while since you did algebra, but we need to learn these things anyway, especially order of operations and things like that, because once we move on to the more complex equations, they're going to be very important. So probability of 5, what we would basically do is subtract probability of negative 1 from each side, right? So that would be our first step. And that's to get rid of probability of 1, of negative 1 on the left side, right? Now let's go ahead and keep on going. So we subtracted neg uh, p of negative 1, probability of negative 1. To get rid of probability of 0, subtract that one too, right? And the same thing for jackpot. And again, this is very much just an algebra review, so hopefully this isn't anything crazy. So we got rid of everything on the left side and moved it to the right, basically. All we did was probability of negative 1, shift it over. 0, shift it over. And jackpot, shift it over. And we end up with probability of 5 equals what? It's 1 minus the probability of negative 1 minus the probability of 0 minus the probability of jackpot. Essentially, if everything's supposed to be equal to 1, 1 minus all the other outcomes should give me one particular outcome. And this kind of goes back into the idea of complements, right? Right? Because we have the probability of all the other outcomes, right? Except for 1. So what we would say is 1, if it's all supposed to be equal to 100%, 1 minus all the outcomes that aren't covered by this particular event. In particular, we're talking about probability of winning $5, right? 1 minus all the outcomes not covered by this event where we win $5 is the complement. Does that make sense? So we're applying again the complement rule. We've seen it before. Again, that's the reason why we talked about probability so much is to get these ideas down so that once we move on to more complex things like this, it's kind of just, oh yeah, I remember that, right? So 1 minus all those probabilities. Don't really have much space, so we'll just keep going here. So equals... 1 minus 0.4 minus 0.35 minus 0 0.001. So our probability of 5 is equal to 0 0.2490. Cool. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So, what's the probability of at least breaking even if you play the lottery game from example one? So, at least breaking even is essentially just saying we're breaking even or we win more money, right? So, is the probability of break even or we get more profit? Does that make sense? And I know it's very wordy, but essentially that's what we're looking for, right? So break even or we get more profit. What do we do when we have or in terms of probabilities or sets of events? When we have or, remember it was the addition rule, right? So event A or B, you add up event A and B, uh, probability of event A and probability of event B together. And we subtract the intersection, right? We subtracted probability of A and B. So let me go ahead and write this real quick. So probability of breaking even. So breaking even is what? Winning how much money? Zero dollars, right? Plus the probability of, what other options do we have? What are the outcomes that are greater than breaking even? We have five dollars, right? And we also have probability of, I'm going to say a jackpot again because I don't feel like writing that many zeros. So now normally with the addition rule, what did we do at the end? So once we added everything up, we would subtract by probability of A and B, right? But in this situation here, you don't win $0 and $5 at the same time, right? So these events, these outcomes here are all disjoint. Right? So when it's disjoint, we don't have a probability of A and B at the end. So we literally just add up the probabilities associated with each of the outcomes. So equals probability of 0 was 0 0.35. Probability of 5 was what? Right, it was 2490. We just found it over here. Right? 
So this one we got from example one. Plus, what's the probability of getting a jackpot? 0 0.001. Awesome. So what do we end up getting? We end up with 0 0.6000. And the reason why I use four decimal places is because that's just traditionally a lot of tables use four decimal places and things like that. So I just stick to four decimal places for probabilities. It's just safe. Cool. So break even or any more with 60%. It's a pretty good, pretty good lottery game, right? So there's a 60% chance that you're gonna go ahead and not lose any money or win something. And what are the possibilities? We have five dollars and a million dollars. So that's a lot of money that we could win. So what's the probability that you win at most ten dollars if you play the lottery game from example one? So probability of at most ten. What is that? That's the probability of winning at most $10 and everything below that, right? And so that includes us losing money. Does that make sense? So you can either win $10 or anything below that, including losing any money. So winning $10 or less. Now, is $10 even an option? Is it one of the potential outcomes that are given by our discrete random variable distribution? So we can see it up there, right? Our options are negative one, zero, five, and a million dollars. So 10 isn't actually on there, but it's okay. And the reason for that is because even though 10's not on there, so this technically would have been where the $10 profit was, right? But that's not an option for this game. I'm sorry, let me scroll up a little. So that would have been where the $10 option was, but that's not really an option in this lottery game. You're not able to profit $10. So what we do then is basically all of the possibilities that are below that, that are potential outcomes, we go ahead and add up those probabilities, right? So we're not going to add up $9, $8, $7. There is no probability associated with those. The next lowest one that we have below 10 is what? It's probability of $5, right? And we keep going left, right? So $10 and below is $5 is one option. The next one is zero. And the last one is negative one. So it's probably associated with winning $5. It's $24.90. We just saw that earlier. Probability of breaking even, 0.35. And the probability of losing a dollar. So basically, you just put a dollar in, you lost it. It's 40% chance. So that gives us 0.9990. So there's a 99.9% .9 chance that you're going to win $10 at most. That sucks. But that's another probability that we can find using the discrete random variable. So we practiced some basics talking about what's a, what's a discrete random variable and the difference between discrete versus continuous. Now let's go ahead and apply these concepts a little further and let's move on to the next set.